A powerful storm system will be impacting the United States over the next few days with significant severe weather continuing, including the risk of damaging winds, very large hail, and a few tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now across the northern plains, we've had some big storms over the last 24 hours, including a small-scale tornado outbreak that happened just after sunset in North Dakota. We were live covering that here on the channel. We end up having about six different tornadoes within 60 minutes, so it was a very active time frame. But overall, a lot of damaging winds and hail on top of that, now moving into Minnesota, where this area of storm activity is weakening. And we are once again expecting more severe weather today across areas like the Northern Plains and the Midwest. And then by Sunday and Monday, that severe weather will stretch into the Great Plains and also back through the Midwest, and then eventually going towards the Ohio Valley and as well as the East Coast. And speaking of yesterday, we end up having at least five tornado reports in North Dakota, but we end up seeing at least six tornadoes on our live stream. On top of that, at least 100 damage reports across areas in the Northern Plains and then a variety of isolated damaging winds that happened across the Ohio Valley Northeast and back into the Southeast yesterday. And we are anticipating that there will be more severe weather today, especially for those in the Midwest and the Northern Plains. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Saturday. And we have a slight risk of severe weather in place in central Wisconsin all the way back through South Dakota and Nebraska, also including much of Southern Minnesota, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table today. But before we go into the hazards, I do want to mention that there is a chance that we get an enhanced risk of severe weather, which may include the Twin Cities, Western Wisconsin, and also into Eastern South Dakota. I totally think that's in play today, as I do think we'll have scattered to numerous severe weather in the upper Midwest. So the main concerns for today will be damaging winds, which may be significant at times, wouldn't rule damaging winds as high as 75 to 80 miles miles per hour with a storm or two across parts of Minnesota. Large to very large hail is also a big concern out of our initial supercells that fire off later this afternoon into the evening. May even see some hailstone sizes as large as the size of apples. There's also a threat for a few tornadoes. We have a 5% tornado risk in place that includes the Twin Cities, also through western Minnesota and a little sliver of western Wisconsin, but we may see a tornado or two even outside of that region, which would encompass areas just to the west of Wausau, Wisconsin, back over towards Sioux Falls in South Dakota. And then as we go into Sunday, the threat of severe weather will continue to shift further down to the south and east as that shortwave trough moves over Minnesota and Wisconsin, where another level two out of five slight risk of severe weather is in place from Des Moines, Iowa, back into the upper peninsula of Michigan, and a large marginal threat from Wyoming back through Missouri, and also northern Michigan, where damaging winds and large hail will be the primary concerns. There is currently no tornado risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center for Sunday, but I would not rule out an isolated tornado or two out of a storm or two back over in parts of Wisconsin and maybe the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So don't be surprised if they add a tornado risk in, in a later outlook, but I'm definitely not very confident that Sunday is going to be really anything when it comes to tornadoes. I think it'll definitely be more of a damaging wind and hail day in these areas. And then on Monday, the threat of severe weather will shift even further to the east, and it's also encompassing a very small area. This is one of the smallest outlooks that we've had in legit weeks. We've not had something like this where there's really just two small areas that we have for a marginal threat of severe weather, one of which is in the Midwest and another one in the mid-Atlantic. I think overall damaging winds is the main concern in both regions. Wouldn't rule out a brief land spout or tornado somewhere in Illinois or Indiana on Monday, but overall the threat is very low, and if anything happens, it'll likely be brief and weak in this setup. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather, beginning with today, which we are expecting a lot of storms to fire off right around 4, 5, 6 o'clock back over in western Minnesota. It will likely begin as one, maybe two different storms, but it will quickly upscale into a big cluster of storms by around 7, 8 o'clock back over in central and western Minnesota with all hazards of severe weather on the table. And if these storms can stay more spaced out and discreet, we could easily have multiple tornadoes. But if they get more clustered like this, it'll likely be mostly a wind and hail event here across central Minnesota with maybe an embedded tornado or two with some of these storms. By around 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, these storms will continue across western Wisconsin, also across central and southern Minnesota, just outside of the Twin Cities by around 10 o'clock. And then by around 11 to 12 o'clock, there may be some storms there in the Twin Cities, also back over into northern Wisconsin, where damaging winds and isolated hail will continue before that line of storms falls apart just after one in the morning back over in northeastern Wisconsin. Another round of storms also expected back over in areas like South Dakota and Nebraska later this evening. That may produce some damaging winds as that tracks across South Dakota overnight tonight and eventually into early Sunday morning. So as we go into Sunday morning, we are expecting a few storms to still be out there across parts of Minnesota, western Wisconsin, with isolated damaging winds being the main concern. 
just after lunchtime a bunch of storms will form there will be a lot of different clusters across the board including back over in the upper peninsula of michigan and northern wisconsin and another cluster of storms likely back over in iowa we may see higher probabilities in future outlooks for certain areas if clusters of storms appear to be more likely in certain regions for damaging winds i think generally speaking across the board though the tornado threat will be low as most of these storms will be outflow dominant and eventually by the early evening hours a lot of those storms are moving into missouri also moving across the kansas city area and then as we go into the overnight hours the storms would be falling apart as they approach st louis also going towards areas like springfield in missouri back over in the central plains pretty much the same story here for sunday we're expecting some clusters to form here across northwestern kansas and again back over in eastern nebraska with damaging winds isolated hail and maybe a brief tornado being a possibility but generally speaking wind is going to be the dominant concern here on sunday just make sure that you're staying weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings and if you have any outdoor plans you may want to reschedule them here in these areas and then on monday the severe weather threat will continue across areas like the midwest and the ohio valley with generally isolated to scattered severe storms being a possibility i think damaging winds will be the primary concern here we may have a few supercells that try to form in eastern indiana western ohio but nothing more than again 60 mile per hour winds quarter sized hail currently in the forecast cluster of storms may fire up back over in eastern illinois during the mid to late afternoon and early evening but overall these storms are not going to last very long again i think a lot of this is just gonna be sporadic wind and hail maybe even a microburst or two but aside from that there will likely be frequent lightning with any storms that do fire on monday so definitely make sure if you have any outdoor plans that you are keeping a close eye to the skies and if you hear thunder make sure that you are going indoors and then beyond monday we are expecting the threat of severe weather to continue but i do think overall the severe weather is going to get a lot more isolated by the middle of this week on tuesday we may see some more severe storms back over in the mid-atlantic and along the east coast meanwhile high pressure will be building across the midwest and the great plains with heat building in addition to drier weather coming in by wednesday and thursday it's basically the same story for most of the country we may see a low pressure system though on thursday move over the rockies and then eventually into the northern plains and this might be our next big storm system we may see severe weather take a big return again back over into the northern plains in the midwest thursday into friday which is right in time by the way for the fourth of july we'll have to wait and see how this thing evolves but we may see at least some scattered severe weather take place in the upper midwest and also back through the central plains on the fourth of july and then on saturday and sunday things are going to continue to stay active back over in the northern and central plains and through the midwest where i would anticipate at least multiple rounds of severe storms over the weekend and then by the following week we really don't know what's going to be happening by then but overall the pattern does appear as if it will stay somewhat active back over in the northern plains and the midwest during the middle of july and speaking of the fourth of july this is a little preview to our high temperatures for the fourth of july across the country most areas east of the rockies will be in the 80s or 90s not really any disparities there if you're back over in the desert southwest many areas will be in the 100s and even back over in areas like seattle will likely be in the upper 70s and low 80s so it's overall going to be a pretty hot stretch of weather here over the next week or two we are obviously in summer but this is overall not really that hot of a fourth of july it's actually gonna be a bit below average at least for many areas in the southern plains even in the southeast right around average so again not really too terrible honestly for a fourth of july and a heads up we actually have an area of development in the gulf here over the next couple of days there's a 40 percent chance of development within the next 48 hours of a tropical depression or storm forming in the southwestern gulf it is very unlikely that this will cause really any impacts to the united states i think overall this storm if it does develop would be a very brief tropical storm and then it'll crash into mexico nonetheless this could be our second name storm of the season and then right behind this we may see something else as we go into july so definitely starting to see at least some activity bubbling up in the atlantic ocean and as well as the gulf and i would fully expect that we are going to see more of that as we go into july and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below we'll likely be live later today so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live if not there's a low chance of a live stream tomorrow there's also likely going to be a video tomorrow morning and then on monday it's a 50 50 on a video live stream appears very unlikely and then after that our next live stream might not be until thursday or friday of next week we might have a little break in the action from our significant severe weather but definitely stay weather aware if you're in the central northern plains midwest ohio valley or northeast as your severe weather season really starts to ramp up as we go into July.